Hey, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's Daily Tarot Love Reading. Welcome to Love and Abundance Tarot. As you can tell, the background here, the setting is a little bit different today. Um, I'm up in the Uintas, uh, the mountains in Utah, and I'm, I'm with a, one of the soul family members from the channel that invited me to come up and to spend the night at their cabin last night. So, beautiful cabin amazing setting that's that surrounds us here so anyways truly enjoying this experience and wanted to queue up turn on the camera and see if i could provide a tarot love reading for all of you today uh just to see what energies are out there in the world of love any messages that'll be meant for us to hear so it's a great experience being up here you know it's interesting because sometimes when i'm watching television i'll see an image of a night sky right with this just filled with stars everywhere and it makes me wonder, you know, I mean, where's that at in the world? Uh, you know, it's like, is that a photoshopped image? Because I've, I've just never seen stars like that. But last night we went out on the on the balcony here, and I mean, the night sky was just filled with stars. So it was a, it was an amazing experience. Uh, very very similar to some of the images that I see on on television every now and then of just stars that go forever. So it had been, a, I don't even know how many years it had been since I'd seen that many stars. Anyways, it was a great experience. But at the end of today's um, Tarot Love reading, I'm going to post a few pictures that I've taken of kind of the area that we're in here, of the mountains and such. So anyways, they're beautiful images. So look forward to posting them at the end of today's video. But let's get started. Uh, first thing I want to do is pull an affirmation card for us for today's reading. Just so we can see which affirmation our guides feel would be best suited for us to hear. Taking us into today's reading. Okay. So today's affirmation comes to us as letting go. The number six. Allow the wisdom to remain, but the sting I shall never feel again. Allow the wisdom to remain, but the sting I shall never feel again. Allow the wisdom to remain, but the sting I shall never feel again. So let's take just a minute and read a little bit more about this affirmation, just so we can see how it applies to us, to us in our life. I feel like the better we can wrap our minds around what this affirmation means, the more understanding we'll have in terms of where it's incorporated into our life. All right, so letting go. Okay, many of us have faced challenges within our lives. They are all lessons and we move through them, changed and creating ourselves anew with the wisdom of, ex of the experience. For many of us, the impact of a difficult or unfair experience is often so profound that it leaves a difficult a blueprint, that is, an energetic wound and scar that may not heal clean and well. We are energetically stuck at the level of, a negative, of the negative experience, which is understandable. We often find it difficult to move into a new part of our life story, and we continue to draw echoes of the same experience to us. This is why letting go is essential for our health, well-being, and for our soul's journey. In letting go, we integrate the wisdom but let go of the trauma. We retain the lesson but not the pain. If this spell card shows you, it is very important for you to make the time to cast the spell as this is the universe wishing you the very best of healing. This spell is one way to reconnect with the present, let go of the past, and allow a new story to be written. You will be wise, but you will no longer be with fresh hurt and the sharp pain that holding on can create. Bitterness, bitterness will not be able to move to poison your days. If you have chosen to cast this spell, the universe acknowledges you for taking action to move on. Your work and magical efforts shall be rewarded with freedom. Give this some time and the will shall turn. Your desire to heal is beautiful and will energetically fire this spell's innate power to bring you positive change. Okay, so we have the energy of letting go taking us into today's tarot love reading. So for some of you, you may be in the process of letting go of something in your life. Uh, for some, you may be letting go of somebody. Uh, for others, you may be letting go of... I know it could be a, it could be a habit, you know, something in your life that's just not serving you very effectively. But let's pull some tarot cards and see what uh, see what the tarot has to say. So, 
I pre-shuffle my decks like always, but I like to shuffle them one more time. Splitting the deck three times. And then pulling the bottom card because I want to see what the central theme and energy is for today's tarot reading. Okay. All right. So showing up at the center of today's reading, we have memories of love. So this is equivalent to the Six of Cups. So Six of Cups, this could refer to, well, it's memories of love. So it's referring to the past. Uh, this could be referring to somebody from your past. Could be somebody from your past you're letting go of. Let's pull some more cards. Okay, so moving across the top, we have victory and success. So here we see another six. Six seems to be popular today. Okay, coming in next to that, we have fertility. So this would be the empress energy. This is about being balanced, right? Mind, body, and spirit, right? Just looking at the image here, she has the ring going around her mind, right? So representing her mind and then representing her body. So perfect balance and unison. You know, the Empress energy, she recognizes her value. She recognizes her worth. So some of you may be in the process of recognizing your value, recognizing your worth, and you could be letting go of something or somebody in your life. Coming in next, we have authority. So... This is equivalent to Aries energy. We have the Emperor showing up. Coming in right next to Fertility. Interesting, so we have the Empress and the Emperor. Kind of have a power couple showing up here. All right, coming in next, we have the number nine, Suffering and Silence. So this is equivalent to the Nine of Swords. Uh, it rep you know, it's, I mean, this is about healing, right? Letting go and allowing the healing to take place. So for some, you may find yourselves, <coughs> excuse me, in this energy, kind of moving into present energy here. So of suffering in silence, maybe just keeping it all inside. All right, coming in next, we have triumphant success. So this is equivalent to the Ace of Swords. That's a beginning beginning coming in right underneath the Emperor card. Here we have Sacrifice, the number 12. So this is equivalent to the Hanged Man. Uh, it's representing Pisces energy. Some of you, you may be a Pisces or be connected to a Pisces. That's kind of interesting, you know, because Sacrifice is coming underneath suffering and silence, right? So for some of you, you know, you may feel like you're maybe making a little bit of a sacrifice by keeping things to yourself, right? Not not getting vocal with it, right? not voicing it, just kind of taking it on the chin and suffering in silence. Okay, coming in next, we have mental conflict. So, two of swords. So, this represents the energy of a choice, a decision in life. Okay, and then coming in next, we have the Four of Cups, which represents the energy of discontent and boredom. That's coming in underneath triumphant success. Okay, let's pull some clarifiers here. See if we can begin to make some sense of these energies that are showing up for us here. Okay, so the first area I want to get some clarification is on this victory and success energy showing up. See if we can learn a little bit more about victory and success. Coming in next, we have the Nine of Wands. Nine of Wands, yeah, it's a good energy. It represents looking at the big picture. You're looking at the long term, thinking about the big picture in the long term as it pertains to victory and success. Not, not interested in the short term gains. We're looking for longevity here. 
Tell us more about victory and success. Okay, coming in next, we have the Page of Swords. So here we see Air, Energy, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra. Pages are, you know, they could be messengers, you know, news coming in. So you may have news coming to you. Could be a message, maybe a message coming in from an air sign, you know, regarding victory and success, regarding something that involves looking at the big picture, the long term. Tell us about fertility. Okay, coming in attached to fertility, we have the King of Cups. So here's the King of Love. Uh, water sign energy. So Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces, again, it doesn't have to be. But the King of Cups, you know, it's the King of Love and it's connected and tied into this Empress energy. And again, the Empress coming in right next to the Emperor. So I really feel like this, we're looking at a power couple here at the top of the reading. Okay, coming in next, we have the Two of Swords. So Two of Swords showing up twice in our reading today. You know, it's representing a choice, right? Thinking about things. Notice on the Two of Swords, she's wearing a blindfold over her eyes. So that may be why she's not making the decision quite yet. Maybe she's waiting to be able to see more, to understand more in order to be able to make a clear and concise decision. Tell us about authority. Okay, here we have one of my favorites, the Queen of Wands, uh, Fire Energy. So Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, so Fire Energy coming out on Aries. So we have Fire on Fire. So we may have an Aries in, in this reading. You know, you may be an Aries or be connected to an Aries. Okay. And then coming in next, we have the Ace of Wands. So here we have another beginning, right? This is a passionate, an exciting beginning, very creative beginning. I feel like it's this Queen of Wands energy, right? This may be leading this Emperor energy towards this Ace of Wands beginning. Like you said, very creative, very passionate beginning. On the Empress energy, you know, we have the King of Cups attached to that, right? So represents unconditional love, right? King of Cups looking like maybe he has a choice to make. Like maybe he's waiting to be able to see more in order to, be, to make his choice. Tell us about suffering and silence. Okay, so coming in next, we have the Five of Pentacles, right? Not surprised to see this energy showing up. It's coming out to clarify suffering and silence. So the Five of Pentacles, it's a limiting energy as it represents the energy of feeling like you're left out in the cold. You know, so some of you, you know, maybe regarding a connection that you have in your life, you know, maybe there's been some type of disconnect in this connection where, you know, at the end of the day, you feel like you were left out in the cold, and rather than voice it, rather than reach out and maybe express how you're feeling, maybe you, you've chosen to, to maybe go inward and to, you know, to, to hold those energies within you and, in a way, suffer in silence. Tell us more about suffering in silence. Okay, so here's, I think, where the, where the, the relationship was headed. Four of Wands. So this is a commitment card. This is the happily ever after card. This can be the marriage card for some. <clears throat> but it represents the energy of two people that are that are committed. Maybe two people that are making plans, right? Making plans to move forward. Maybe at the end of the day, somebody might have changed their mind because here we have the five of pentacles energy, which is representing the energy of feeling like you're left out in the cold. So I feel like that's what took place is you were, you were on your way, right? Towards a commitment, right? Towards coming together. And then poof, right? Things changed. Things took a turn, and all of a sudden there was a disconnect that took place there. All right, tell us about memories of love. So here we have the lovers card. It's a card of Gemini. So memories of love. This is uh, this is referencing somebody from our past. 
So I feel like this is a maybe a past connection that's here. And it's regarding these two people on this card. Tell us more about memories of love. Okay, so here we have the Five of Cups. So Five of Cups coming in connected to the memories of love. So, I mean, it's all beginning to make a lot more sense. Five of Pentacles came out just a few minutes ago. So the energy of feeling like you're left out in the cold. You know, so it's, so it's coming in connected to somebody from our past, right? So for somebody out there, you may be dwelling on these three cups that are tipped over, right? It's the setback. It's the, it's the disappointment. But if your focus is on these three cups that are tipped over in the water, it may prevent you from seeing these two full cups behind her, right, that are being offered. So the good news, we have the two of cups showing up here. Talk about the two of cups. Here we have the lover's card attached to it. Energy of Gemini. You may be a Gemini or be connected to a Gemini. Tell us about triumphant success. Okay, here we have another queen. So the queen of swords. What is the queen of swords energy all about? So it represents the energy of air sign. You know, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra. It doesn't have to be, right? But it can be. Queen, so we think of female. Again, doesn't have to be. You know, but the queen of swords, you know, she comes in using her sword, right? She's cutting away and she's removing energies that just don't serve her anymore. What are those energies exactly? Well, we're looking at them right here, right? With the five of pentacles. And then we also see him showing up, manifesting here in the Five of Cups as well. So I feel like it's the Queen of Swords, right? Coming in with this energy, with the sword, wanting to, you know, it's representing your energy. So you embracing this Queen of Swords energy, wanting to come through and, and to cut out the energy energies in your life that just aren't serving you anymore. Let's get some more clarification. Tell us about triumphant success. Okay, coming in next, we have the unknown card. So the unknown card coming in attached to triumphant success. I feel like the unknown card is showing up because this queen of swords energy, right? This is a choice for each of us at the end of the day, whether or not we want to embrace this energy, whether or not we want to use this sword if we're truly ready in life, right? If we're truly ready to cut away the energies in our life that just aren't service serving us anymore right maybe this is about letting go of somebody and it could be letting go of somebody from our past you know but cutting away energies like this five of cups right that just aren't serving us anymore but at the end of the day it's a choice you know it's a choice whether or not we want to take on and embrace this queen of swords energy so we have the unknown card showing up right because choice hasn't been made yet so i feel like this you know, the energy of this beginning, this triumphant success, I feel like maybe it's not ready to start to begin yet until the Queen of Swords energy comes in, right, to cut away and, and to remove those energies that aren't serving us. And what do I mean by all of that at the end of the day, right? So, for example, I'm going to use me as example. So if I'm feeling this energy, right, if I'm feeling like I'm left out in the cold, if I'm feeling like, if I'm feeling defeated, you know, if I'm stuck in the past and, I, and I'm thinking about the loss, right, the sadness, the grief represented in those three cups, what it means to me at the end of the day is I'm experiencing a lower vibration, right, a lower vibration in life. So this is about us being able to embrace this Queen of Swords energy, to use the sword, to put it to work, to cut away the energies that just aren't serving us. Why? So that we can raise our vibration. I'm trying to raise our vibration to bring in this this new beginning is it's ace of swords beginning which is a new way of looking at things you know looking at things from a seeing things from a different perspective you know i feel like it's the queen of swords that that removes the limiting energies in order to open to free us up to see things from a different perspective 
Tell us about sacrifice. So sacrifice, this can represent the energy of, you know, it's the hanged man energy. So, you know, he's, he's hanging suspended by his ankles. You know, he's waiting, he's waiting to make a choice, right? And what is he make, ready to, waiting to make a choice on? Three of pentacles. Um, you know, three of pentacles is a good energy. It represents the energy of two people that are, that are working together, working together to create and to manifest, right? So this may be a romantic relationship. I mean, it's a spiritual connection, you know, beautiful connection. Um, it may be romantic for some. It may not be for others. This may be business as well. Tell us more about sacrifice. Tell us more about sacrifice. Okay, so we have two energies showing up. They're kind of opposite energies, right? So here we have the four pentacles, which represents the energy. If we look at the figure in this tree, she's, you can see she's clinging to these pentacles, right? These pentacles represent the must-haves in life, right? Things, things must be a certain way, right? And when, when we're, we take on this kind of rigid mentality, right, this closes us off, right? Because we don't just accept what the universe is bringing us. It's like things have to be a certain way. Coming in right next to it, we have the Six of Pentacles, which is just the opposite energy. This is about giving and receiving freely. All right, so we're here we are overcoming this energy, and this may be why the why the, the sacrifice energy is showing up, this hangman energy, because maybe there's this inner conflict going on between, you know, this desire to that things must be a certain way to letting go of these energies and opening yourself up, seeing what the universe brings into you. It just represents a beautiful energy of exchange of giving and receiving right? perfect balance all right let's learn a little bit about the mental conflict now tell us a little more about the mental conflict two of swords why is the two of swords showing up It is so quiet and peaceful up here. I mean, I just love it. Okay, so coming in attached to mental conflict, here we have the high priestess energy, right? So we're being reminded of our intuition. So here we are stuck in decision mode, right? Choices to make. Do I go left? Should I go right? We have the mental conflict right here. And we're being reminded with the high priestess energy, right? If we're, if we're unable to see to see as much as we'd like to be able to see in order to feel comfortable making the choice, we're being reminded of our intuition here, right? Trusting that sense, that inner feeling, that inner compass that all of us have within us. Tell us more about mental conflict. Okay, so part of the conflict, part of this mental conflict is, is Nine of Swords, right? Nine of Swords showed up twice in today's reading. It's also connected to the suffering and silence, right? So we see eight swords that are perched in the ground. The ninth sword lies right here, and this bird, he's just, this little bird is just waiting for her to pick up this sword and to stick it in the ground, right? Because he wants to fly up there with his buddies. But that's what it takes to be able to allow this energy to pass, right? She has to get up, takes courage to do that, to pick up the sword, Picking up the sword, you know, recognizing, looking at, looking at exactly what's taking place, being accountable with it, sticking that sword in the ground. So for many, right, it's this fear, right? Maybe this fear could be getting hurt, right? Again, you know, being hurt from the past, you know, this fear that's creating this mental conflict of not being able to choose. Tell us about discontent and boredom. Tell us about discontent and boredom.
Okay, here's the cure for boredom right here. So Knight of Cups, right? Coming in, what is the Knight of Cups about? This, is, this represents the energy of your knight in shining armor. So I feel like this is... This is your, your knight in shining armor, right? Coming in, right? This knight, what is he bringing you? He's bringing you love. So bringing you love in order to help you overcome this energy of feeling discontent and bored. All right, tell us a little more about discontent and boredom. Okay, and here we have it showing up again. So the hangman energy. So again, that this... You know, he's wearing a blindfold over his eyes, so he's unable to see as much as he'd like to be able to see. So maybe it's this Knight of Cups coming in, right? This bringing in love. Maybe it's this Knight of Cups. Maybe that's the energy that it takes in order for him to be able to remove his blindfold so that now he can see things clearly. He can feel confident making a decision. Okay. All right, guys, I think I'm done with today's tarot love reading. Uh, I hope it resonated with all of you, right? I hope that you were open to hearing this messages and, the, you know, and the messages that were in the reading, if you were receptive to them. It's a beautiful day in the world. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate your viewership. Uh, I appreciate all of you that are following the channel, following the readings. Truly appreciate having you around and I uh, appreciate all of your views, right? All of the love and the support that you provide me here on this channel. I can't thank you guys enough. Okay, I think I'm going to head out back to the mountains and enjoy some of this beautiful outdoor beauty that surrounds me. Okay, guys, have a fantastic day. Thanks again for letting me share.